Hi there, everyone. Today we're going to check out how thousands relate to grams and kilograms. And we'll use this worksheet as a guide. Uh, this can be a good way to check your work. So what I would do is go through this worksheet first on your own, see if you can make sense of it. And then when you're stuck, or if you get stuck, you can come on over to the video and take a look to see what you might do to tackle it. And if you're finished your worksheet, you can use it to check. So, so first of all, we get oriented to the different weights and fractions represented by each of the kilogram weights. So, so our big one here is our whole number. This is the full kilogram, our one whole that we'll be comparing to everything. Um, a one whole actually does have a fraction as well. It's one over one, just so that you know it. And uh, next on the list here is our 100 gram weight. Now, 100 gram weight is an interesting thing. It can be a little confusing because you would think that a 100 gram weight would be a hundredth of a kilogram, but it's not. It is a tenth of a kilogram, or 0.1, which is also a tenth, and or here's our fraction, 1 over 10. So why is that? Let's take a look at the first question here. How many 100 gram weights does it take to make a whole kilogram? And it's asking us to draw, use words, and or write an equation to support your thinking. Okay, well, if we know that each of the weights is equal to 100 grams, we need to think how many of those weights is it going to take for us to make 100? So, so if we're at 100, here's another 100 bringing us to 200. Here's another 100 bringing us to 300. You can kind of get the idea here, right? And I mean, if you, if you know a little shortcut, you'll know that instead of doing all this drawing and adding here, we can actually, there's a shortcut here. All we need are 10 of these 100 gram weights. And we'll end up with 1,000 grams, and 1,000 grams is exactly the same as one kilogram. And this, by the way, is important to know because this explains why 100 grams is a tenth of a kilogram, right? Because it gives us a sense of that 10 of these 100 gram weights are needed to build a kilogram. Therefore, a 100 gram weight is a tenth of a kilogram. Okay, let's take a look at our next weight. So this one's quite a bit smaller. It's a 10 gram weight and it is one hundredth of a kilogram. So again, because you have a 10 here and a, and a hundredth here, it can get confusing sometimes because you look at the 10 gram weight and think, well, should not be a tenth. It would be really nice and simple if it were, but that's not the case. It's a hundredth instead. And if we scroll down to this next question, how many 10 gram weights does it take to make a whole kilogram? Draw, use words, and write an equation to support your thinking. We can do the following. So just like above, uh, if I were to do a little bit of multiplication here, if I took just 10, 10 gram weights, I would only end up with 10 times 10 is 100 grams. Now that's not a full kilogram, right? I need a lot more than 10 10 gram weights. And in fact, I need 100 10 gram weights to make 1,000 grams or one kilogram. There we go. So it's important to know, of course, that it takes 100 of these 10 gram weights because that gives us our place value. That's why 10 gram weights are known as hundredths. And then finally, we'll take a look down here. How many one gram weights does it make take to make a whole kilogram. Now, one gram weight is our smallest of all, okay? And it should be clear to you at this point, we know that it takes a thousand grams to build one kilogram. So therefore, it must be that if we're gonna take these gram weights and build a kilogram, we are going to need a thousand of them because each of these weights here is simply worth one gram, right? And this is why it is known as a thousandth of a kilogram. That's why it's important to know. Okay, so moving right along, we have this idea of a balance scale. Now this balance scale is in balance. That means that these three objects here, this guy and this guy and this guy, oop, not three objects, four objects on this side of the balance scale 
are perfectly equal to this amount here on the other side. It's if you took all these weights and you added them together, they would equal 1.111 kilograms or one and a hundred and eleven thousandth of a kilogram. And the question is, how did I get that number? So let's take a look. Now, the nice thing is about these gram weights is that we can use simple place value to help us determine what the numbers are going to look like. So you can see here that one whole kilogram, that is what comes on the left side of the decimal. All whole numbers are going to be on this side of the decimal. And we could have all kinds of whole kilogram weights all the way up to infinity, right? Then we have a decimal right here. Very important because it's going to separate that from our parts. Now, our parts are here on the right side of the decimal. Here is our 100 gram weight. That, that's where the tenths go, okay? Here is our uh, 10 gram weight. It takes 100 of them to make a kilogram, so it's gonna go in the hundredth spots. And then we have here our thousand, our one gram weight, and it takes a thousand of them. So it goes in, in the thousandth spots. So this is how I ended up with this fraction. So I ended up with 1.111. And if you wanted to shrink it down so you could see it, that's what it would look like. And our unit, of course, we're comparing to kilograms. So we have 1.111 kilograms. And then to express that as a fraction, you can see that right up here, right? So all over a thousand, it would take, I could add 100 plus 10 plus one, and that gets me to 111 thousandths. All right, so let's take a look at some of our questions here. You give it a try. So what do we have? We have, um, we have no whole kilograms, so that we start off with a zero in this case. We have, oh, um, a 100 gram weight, that's a tenth of a kilogram, so we have one of those. We have one, two, three, four, five, 10 gram weights, those are our hundreds. We have five of those, and then we finally have three thousandths. So that is our total. Don't forget the unit. It's going to be hard for me to squeeze in here, so I'm just going to write it down here. So we have 0 0.153 kilograms, and the fraction for this is 153 over 1,000, or 153 thousandths. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, again, we have zero whole kilograms, so we'll put a zero down. We have one tenth. We have one hundredth, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thousandths. Don't forget your unit, kilograms. And our fraction in this case is going to be 117 thousandths. Okay, on to our next one. I get a little trickier as we go because you're not going to see all of the place values represented. Okay, so zero whole kilograms again. This time we have one two tenths. We have no uh, hundredths. That's really important to note. So that's a zero. Make sure you fill that place value. Otherwise, these little thousands are gonna be in the wrong spot. The zero kind of holds the place for them. So there we go. We have 0 0.203 kilograms. I apologize, by the way, for my very messy printing. I'm using my finger on my screen here. And here is the fraction, 203 thousandths. Okay, on to the next. Okay, now we have zero whole kilograms. Don't forget the place value holder. Do we have any tenths? No, we don't. So we have to put a zero for our tenths. We have one, two, three, four, five hundredths, and we have six thousandths. There you go. Kilograms, of course. And then our fraction in this case is going to be 56 over a thousand, 56 thousandths. Okay, on to the next one. Zero whole kilograms. We have one, two, three tenths. We have one, two, three, four hundredths. Now we have zero thousandths. We can put that zero down, no problem. And you could, if you left it off, though, you have to be very careful. So the reason I put it on there is because our fraction, if it's going to be out of a thousand, then we have to make sure that we've counted them as thousandths and not as hundredths. If you 
didn't bother putting that zero down and ended up with 0 0.34, then you're going to be expressing your fraction as a hundredth because that's where you ended the whole game, right? So be very careful. Next one. Okay, so we have one whole kilogram. We need a decimal in this case. We have zero tenths, zero hundredths, and one thousandth. And there's our kg, of course. Oops, not very well done. Um, the fraction in this case is a mixed number. We have one whole, and then we have one over a thousand. There you go. One and one thousandth. And then our very final one, we have one whole kilogram. We have a decimal. Do we have any hundredths? No, we don't. We need to have that zero as a placeholder. We have two tenths. Now you could stop there, but you have to be cautious. Did I say two tenths? I meant two hundredths. And then the thousandths, there are no thousandths. I'm going to write a zero then as well because I'm going to express my fraction as thousandths. I'm going to say that we have 20 thousandths in this case. And remember, if you didn't bother writing that zero down, you would have ended up with a decimal 1.02. And then in that case, you would have two hundredths, one and two hundredths, not one and 20 thousandths. They are equivalent to one another. Okay, now on, in this particular spot, I'm not going to take you through the whole thing. We can do one of them together. This one you have to draw in the weights and then fill in the missing fraction. So you go like this. So we have um, zero whole kilograms, so I don't need that. We have two hundredths, so there we go. There's my two hundredths. I'm going to lay, not two hundredths, two tenths. Oh, see how easy it is to make that mistake? Okay, these are hundred gram weights. Those are my tenths. We have zero hundredths and we have five thousandths. So these little ones, one, two, three, four, five, those are all thousandths. Okay, I'm going to say that just so that it makes it clear. And then the fraction in this case is 205 over 1,000. There we go. And that zero of mine looks like a six. I apologize. Um, okay, and that's basically how you do it. So you just want to be really clear that if your drawings are not clear, like my drawings are not very clear, that you are representing them by labeling them because that makes it clearer for your audience. Okay, and then at the bottom of the page, sorry, on to the next page, let's take a look at um, putting weights on a number line. And it says here to add important number benchmarks to justify its location. So benchmarks are those important spots on the line that help you make the estimate. Between zero and a kilogram, an important benchmark is the halfway point, And that is zero point you can say 500 because that's between 0 0.500 is um, halfway between it and, a th and, and one kilogram because one kilogram, of course, is a thousand grams. So you could also have um, stated that this number is 0 0.5. That's another way of looking at it or 0 0.50. So, okay, halfway points is one of my important number benchmarks. Um, I'm looking at placing 0 0.5. 330 kilograms. So that means it's going to be on this side of my benchmark. The next important ones is to think, okay, if that's um, 0 0.500, where would 0 0.100 be? Probably about there. 0 0.100. Next important one, 0 0.200. Next one, 0 0.300. And the final one, 0. 4, 0, 0. And now that I have my line on the left side of the number line marked off so that I have um, all the numbers, all my benchmarks in place, I now get to place um, 0 0.330. It's going to be right in here somewhere, right in this space. Um, again, I can identify another important benchmark to help me place it. I can go right halfway and right halfway between 0 0.300 and 0 0.400 is the number 0 0.350. And given that now I know that, that between these two spaces, that it's a little hard for me to get to. It's going to be close. It's going to be close to halfway between there. I think I can put it right about there. That is going to be 0 0.3. Three zero kilograms. So there you go. So 
So when you mark off your line, make sure you're placing those benchmarks so it's very, very clear where the number goes. And if I scroll down a bit more, there is a final challenge for you. What other two examples of measurements um, have thousands? So what is one one thousandth of this measurement known as? Now, there's all kinds of things, uh, by the way, that have thousands. So I'm going to give you some hints. You might think of time, especially time in seconds or years. You might think of volume or capacity. You might think of some linear measurements as well. So that gets you some starts. And then a lot of these ones, in fact, all of these ones have special names for their tens and hundreds. And yes, it's possible that they don't have any special names because really there's no special names for a tenth and a hundredth of a kilogram, but many other measurements do have special names for them. So, and the ones for linear measurements should be very, very familiar with you, maybe even time. And uh, I, yeah, I encourage you to do a little bit of research. So there you go. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much and good luck.